Hello YouTube! Trillions of stars are scattered throughout the universe and some of these stars known to us are really fascinating. They have features that at first glance are not easy to explain. One of these stars is Myra. This dying star travels with incredible speed across the vast expanses of space. The most unusual feature of Myra is its tail, which stretches for several light years. Most of the stars in the Milky Way galaxy rotate slowly around its center. The speed of this rotation is almost the same as that of the interstellar gases. For example, our Sun passes through the local interstellar cloud at a speed of about 25 kilometers per, per second. But the world we are considering today is flying through interstellar space at a speed of 130 kilometers per second. Because of such decent speed, the substance that makes up the world is blown away from it, as, if it, as it were. As a result of this process, a unique tail is formed, which leads to the indescribable delight of terrestrial astronomers. This tail is a feature that makes Myra one of the most unusual stars in the constellation Whale, so to say. The tail of Myra was first discovered in the same year, 2007, using the Galax Space Telescope, orbiting ultraviolet space telescope. A group of astronomers obtained high-quality images of Myra in ultraviolet light. Scientists saw this tail consisting of gas and dust in them. This phenomenon has greatly puzzled astronomers since the star has been observed for more than 400 years. But the tail has never been detected before, and only the ultraviolet images help to reveal its existence. The usual photos taken earlier just did not show it. The length of Myra's tail is almost 13 light years. That's three times the distance between the Sun and Proxima Centauri. As mentioned above, Myra's tail was formed as a result of the process of discarding the star's materials due to its high speed of movement. Every 10 years, the world loses about as much material as the mass of our Earth. Myra's tail has been forming for about the last 30,000 years. All this time, it interacted with the interstellar dust scattered in the path of the star. Well, the material dropped will later turn into new stars and planets. Most of this material consists of hydrogen atoms. After it leaves the star, its atoms gradually lose their momentum and they release energy in the form of ultraviolet rays. It was this rays that the Galax telescope discovered, exposing the fantastic tail of the star. Myra is a double pulsating variable star and during periods of maximum luminosity it flashes and becomes the brightest, brightest star in its constellation. But even with the minimal brightness, it can be seen from, the, from Earth with ordinary binoculars. The best, month, the best month to observe the star would be October and November. The star system consists of two components, World A and World B. And the star of World A is a red giant. Myra B is a white dwarf. The distance between the objects is about 70 astronomical units. They are located at a distance of about 417 light years from Earth. <clears throat> the name is a Latin word. It means amazing or wonderful. It was given to the star by the uh, Polish astronomer Johann Hevelius in his book Historia Mira Stella back in 1662. The name was officially approved by the working group of the 
International Astronomical Union on June 30, 2016. So, formerly it applied only to the main component of the system. Previously, Myra was also known as Stella Myra and um, Whale Neck. By studying such stars such as Myra A and Myra B, scientists hope to understand how the binary stars of our galaxy differ from single stars and how exactly they give their reserves of new materials to the stellar ecosystem of the Milky Way. Amazing, <clears throat> amazing. The universe, the galaxy. I mean, the study of astronomy is fascinating and every day we find something new. But I want to talk to you about something. What will happen to our sky in the future? Let's talk about this also today. Let's say you live in a crowded city and you're probably used to the fact that you can almost always see only a couple of dozen stars in the night sky. Light pollution has deprived many of us the pleasure of contemplating the beautiful night landscapes of the universe, right? Which our ancestors could observe once upon a time. Undoubtedly, these beautiful views can be observed in some very remote areas of the world even now. I mean, I've seen some in the deserts. Incredible. But for most people, it is simply impossible to see the night sky in all its splendor. And in this sense, they are very limited people. I mean, they are limited by this, by not being able to see the sky, deprived of the opportunity to contemplate eternity. But it will not always be like this, because in the future, the night sky in any part of our planet will turn into a dark, starless void. And this will not happen at all because of light pollution. Fortunately, we're talking about a distant future from here, which will come in billions of years from now. And the above event will occur for several main reasons. So what will happen to our universe in the future? First, as you may have heard, the universe is expanding rapidly and this expansion is accelerating. This expansion means that other galaxies are moving further and further away from the Milky Way. In fact, from time to time, some galaxy becomes so far away that we can no longer see it. Even with our best telescopes, it will take some time and all the telescopes of mankind will be able to detect stars only within the Milky Way and the nearest galaxies, because all the, all the other galaxies will completely disappear from our field of vision, of view. But one day the stars of the Milky Way will also disappear. As you probably know, all stars have a life cycle. They are born, they live, and they die. Our Sun will not escape this fate either. In the future, it will turn into a red giant. This will happen in about 5 billion years. And it will completely die in another 5 billion years. But let's assume that mankind still exists at that time and manage to find another habitable planet, habitable planet, maybe near another star, or maybe a couple of such planets. Okay, so we move to this new world next to the new star. Um, stargazing will become a much less fascinating activity in the future, because one by one all the stars visible in the night sky will suddenly start to go out. Well, your, dis your distant descendant might, might say it's all right uh, to his frightened wife and the crying children. New ones will be born in their place. Don't cry so much. However, the descendant is wrong. This is not the case at all. Scientists have calculated that 95% of all stars that could ever exist in the universe in the past, present, and in the future have already been born. The peak of star formation in our universe happened about 11 billion years ago. And in the billions of years that have 
passed since then, this process has slowed down significantly. In addition, the biggest and the brightest stars in the sky will go out the fastest. After all, small stars have a lifetime, oddly enough, much longer than the large ones. Tiny red dwarfs have the longest lifespan. Some of them will be able to live for trillions of years, but red dwarfs are too dim to be seen with the naked eye. So, if in the future our descendants indeed survive long enough to populate the universe lit only by red dwarfs, they would look into the night sky and see nothing. That's what some scientists believe will happen. We will probably not know, but I wanted to let you know and uh, try to look up into the sky as much as you can see. You will see stars and some other celestial objects about which I talk once, once in a while. Thank you for your attention. Please support my research through the links in the description to this channel. Please subscribe to my channel and I'll bring you more interesting reports. Thank you.